Be advised, mature content ahead. This podcast is brought to you ad-free thanks to the Legion of Demons at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. If you like what you hear, there's much more at patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. Join the Legion. That's patreon.com slash N-O-T-L-P. And now the show. How do you do? Just a word of friendly warning. I think it will thrill you. It may shock you. It might even horrify you. So if any of you feel that you do not care to subject your nerves to such a strain, now is your chance to, uh, well, we warn you. That's the mumbles circus. The mumbles. That's not a, that wasn't like a faulty sound system or PA. That was how they talk at the mumble circus. The, the, from the popular <laughs> 1970s children program, the mumble circus. Exactly. Yeah. That's what, yeah. That's the intro. Yeah. We uh, call this theme Andy's Circus. Oh, Andy. you get it. You get it, guys. <laughs> It's my circus. I got to say the little icon I made for this is the, one of the most proud moments of my life. It's very nice. I dig it. Next to the birth of Kelly's sons. <laughs> <laughs> Second only to. Well. Uh, won't, be funny if they, won't be funny if they look like the uh, picture you uh, came up with. That's what inspired it. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, and So we we're talking about the 1947 film noir classic uh, Nightmare Carnival. Allie. Allie. Nightmare Alley, Nightmare Alley, <laughs> Carnival of Popcorn, Carnival of Nightmares, Alleyway of Carnivals. <laughs> it's wow, we're, we're talking about Alleyway wow. of Carnivals, <laughs> featuring Herman Mendershaw. We're talking about Kate and Alley go to the carnival. <laughs> what are we doing again? Nightmare Alley. <laughs> wow. Nightmare Alley, yeah. starring Cincinnati's own Tyrone Power. Oh, ho, ho, wow. Have you paid the Tyrone Power bill? <laughs> <laughs> My eyebrows are going to be repossessed. Um. So welcome. Yeah, 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 yeah. And uh, straight to video, Russian roulette. Kelly will be reviewing something called Books of Blood, which is not. Is. Is this, isn't there other? Wasn't there another Books of Blood movie besides this one? Mm. Oh, me neither. Not going to look. <laughs> I refuse to. I refuse to even know. <laughs> There have been other like stories from Books of Blood turned into movies, but I don't know if they've ever done another like anthology. Unless of it. this has been in like production, it was supposed to be a, a series. So yeah, it, has it was supposed been. to be a series. That's what I thought. That's yeah. probably what you that might are be thinking a, about because yeah. when it was announced, yeah. it was going to be a series. Mm -hmm. I think I even read it on the show. O M G. Yeah. And then I was like, "Oh, this sounds bad." And then they made a movie out of it instead. You may notice this episode is what you think is a day late, but you're on the Kelvin timeline. That's right. We now release on Mondays. <laughs> We're in we the hold our releases <laughs> for one entire day to make it much more intense for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll be getting Origins if you're a patron, patreon.com slash an OTLP. We've got a lot saved up. Yeah. yeah. We got a whole lot of those backed up, you know. Ready and to release. Mm. About to get it's such a load of content. Some of them are real nasty <laughs> ones too. Well, are you gonna? Are we on the honor system? Because I could lie and said, "Oh, I released my podcast yesterday." <laughs> you could lie. <laughs> you could, uh, but you shouldn't. Uh, so, <laughs> also uh, check that out. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Meetups every week on Thursday nights. We get together on Zoom and BS. And God, those have been a lifesaver lately. So that's that's why you gotta go to patreoncom yeah. New yeah. pa new Beelzebub. <gasps> oh. Oh. Mike Burns. Ah, yeah, boy. He came to the meeting. Uh, we, yes. we just met him at uh, Horror Hound. Yep. All right. He's our new best friend. I didn't meet you at Horror Hound. He's just but as, hi. Just as charming on Zoom as he is in person. Just as charming. Just so as that charming. Out. Uh, so that was really fun. Uh, Thank you, Mike. Thank yeah. you, Mike. Appreciate you. I'm sorry I didn't meet you. Well, Maybe you can always come to a meetup on Thursday, well, guys. I could. I know you all get your hair did on Thursday nights. <laughs> that's why you're never there. That's why my hair is so damaged because I it's overprocessed. Every it. Over, overdid. Yeah. yeah. 
No, I get it. But there's a I whole need a, heap. I need of, an excuse not to come. That's when I'm working on yeah. my abs. Yeah. <laughs> I got my ab roller out on Thursdays. It's Thursday the only night I can do it. <laughs> that's ab roller night. <laughs> Is it just all the abs or just one? You know, I, oh, it's just the six in the middle. <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> no side abs? No. Nah. No back abs? No. Nah. That'd be freaky, wouldn't it? If it's yes. just one half of your abs is developed. When I when I try to get Andy and Kelly to come to meetups, I feel like a mother who is like, you never come over anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? Now I know how that feels. Like, wow. You never call anymore. Wow, guys, wow. Um, it's okay, Fred. I, I assure you that we're eating enough. Are you? And we're and we're doing our laundry all the time, so okay. it's okay. Yeah, you're come wearing on. clean underwear. I'll stop smoking yeah. one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> I only beg you because I love you so much. I know. Um, <laughs> He's got mom. It's like, it's like cats in the cradle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, there's a reason why we don't come over. <laughs> Remember when I was doing those Zoom meetups and you never came when uh-huh. I was growing yeah. up? <laughs> Recording the podcast just the other day. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Freddie made a fart joke the usual way yep, I much. asked you to come to so many And you said you had to work And he reviewed a porno <laughs> I think it was gay We'll get together soon man You know we'll watch some gay porn soon <laughs> That's good I like yeah. that what you did well, actually, me and Kelly have our own meetups with our oh, uh, our <laughs> It's Little a bitches. secret meetup. I knew it. I knew it's not it. so secret anymore. We have a whole Patreon. <laughs> Ready there, hey, out without us. But it's just for meetups. I oh. want to thank everybody just on a personal note for um, personally, um, personal, personally, on oh my, my personality. God. Personally, I uh, went. I've, you know, I. He's been, been having his freakout moment. That I had my like. My midlife crisis stuff, but you know what? It, a lot of good is coming out of it. I'm playing music again. I'm writing a lot of music and recording it. This and, is true. Uh, lots, yeah, lots and lots. Just keeps coming out, uh, and I love that a lot of you have checked it out. But if you're interested, just search me on any of the the big music services. It's just my name, Freddie Morris. That's with a Y. F R E D D Y. People of the South, stop it with the IE. So far, I've only released instrumental tracks, but Kelly and I are working on some stuff too. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping to rope him in on some recordings of, and uh, and those would be like alternative rock covers mostly. Ah, uh, alternative yeah. rock. Alternative rock, remember that? Remember I'm wearing my flannel rock. shirt Turn right it up, now. man. <laughs> yeah, man. But the other stuff I've done is kind of like film score style uh, pieces that have kind of stories behind them or yeah. jazz stuff. But it's all singles. He's so so jazzy. check it out. I think there's four or five out there right now. DJ Jazz and Fred. Come. And the Fresh Prince. Mm-hmm. So it's been a couple of weeks. Yeah. Since we took last week. It off. feels like forever. That, that Star Trek convention took it out of us. It really. Uh, it was like you went to the future. And had, it took a little minute for you to come back. The, but the temporal prime directive states, I can't say. Man, what a great time. Mm-hmm. So you may or may not have. Who knows? <laughs> Neither confirm nor deny. Star Trek Mission Chicago. Yeah, we went to this convention. Now, Andy came with, but he did not attend the convention. And I'm letting people know, because I don't know if he wants a stink of that. Or he staunchly him. protested that part. Yeah. He stood <laughs> out. Yeah, I, stood, I had a sign and everything. Yeah. Andy Actually, went, I like, I... I said if I was going to go, I was going to troll them and wear like a Jedi costume, but I didn't. Oh, yeah. There were crossover like, Federation costumes Federation is there. tyranny. <laughs> Somebody, there was a Star Trek character. I think he was a red shirt, and he had a lightsaber through his chest. I don't think it was a lightsaber. It was. I checked. I double-checked the guy's account. It Fine. was a lightsaber. Amy refuses That's to cute. believe. cute. I thought it was cute. There was a Captain America Borg mashup. Uh-huh. That was cool. Yeah. Um. What a great time. The panels were the best panels I've yeah. ever, short of WonderCon. WonderCon panels are pretty great, but this was right up there with those. We got to see uh, a panel with solar lower panels. decks, solar panels. The lower decks panel <laughs> was the highlight. I mean, being in a room breathing the same air as Kate Mulgrew was mm. the true highlight for That's me. That's the highlight. That's the highest of lights. Because she amazing. She made Freddie cry. You could call yeah, it a skylight, cry. probably. Yeah. It's because she punched you in the face and took your lunch money. She did. She said, hey, fat kid, give me your lunch money. I need coffee. <laughs> just, like, just like my character. Anyway. Yeah. She doesn't sound like that. She no. sounds much more regal. I can't, I can't impersonate her. But the Lower Decks panel was really exciting for me because it brought, it was the Star Trek. Yeah. 
But it was also the horror because Jerry O'Connell was there and yeah. Jack Quaid, who was just in Scream. And it brought the Rick and Morty because Mike McMahon. The good creator worked on the that show. Yeah. It was so cool. That is cool. It was so cool. I think it's the coolest. It was cool. Uh, all Noel Wells, who was on Saturday Night Live for a little bit, but I always thought she was great. Who? Oh, the, she's the one who plays. She was the, a featured the, player on SNL for a little bit. Little green character? Mm-hmm. I knew I recognized her from somewhere else. Yeah. I didn't realize it was SNL. Interesting. Anyway, Star Trek nerd stuff, done. Strange New Worlds, though. I got to say, that panel yes. we did for Strange, that's the new Star Trek series that's coming out. You okay, Kelly? Is something rumbling? Uh, also snoring. Ah, okay. Yeah, it's probably that. Gotcha. Sometimes Something's rumbling. The animals, like animals snoring and breathing catches me off guard so many. Like, yeah? my cats will be making these breathing sounds and like I will freak out because I'm like, what is that? And then it's an, just an animal. And then I'm like, oh, all right. And that's oh, literally exactly animal, what just man. happened. It's just an animal. It man. sounds like something crazy. What look, look is at me. that? Look at me. <laughs> You're with me. You're safe. <laughs> Thank you're safe. you. You're with me. Kelly, for a split second there, you got me scared that you had the sixth sense <laughs> and you were sensing some like tragedy. Uh, like, I was uh, just doing a cold big, read on you guys. Yeah. What if you just. <laughs> I thought I was. I thought there was going to be an earthquake coming. Yeah. Out. I was like, oh, shit. Like Kelly, and you get to a bathtub. Into, he'd disappear into like a Wait, that's tornadoes. Right under him. Yeah, but then I was going to sell you earthquake insurance. Yeah. No, Andy, get under a door, uh, an art, a door thing way. Yeah, get, get under a door thing way. I bet a guy at the bottom of a hole that opened during an earthquake would like sell a lot of it, earthquake insurance to other people. I bet he would. That's like a great business model. Anyways, uh, Strange New Worlds. It takes place between Discovery and the original series. Yeah, you know about this? No, it's Captain Pike. It's Ooh. Pike on the Enterprise. Wow. With Spock and Uhura. Oh. And they, we got and to number see one. footage from it. Number one from the pilot. Oh. Who they never never Major named, Barrett. right? In the No, she never had a name. They named her and now it's um it's uh Rebecca, Rebecca Romaine. Romaine, who's awesome and a huge Star Trek fan. Yeah. And um her sounds husband, fun. <clears throat> she's married to Jerry O'Connell, who's mm-hmm. a voice on Lower Decks. So they're like a Star Trek family too, which is really sweet. Queef? It's really queef. <laughs> it is so queef. It's the queefest. If you have the means, it is so queef. <laughs> hey, you know what? That, queef happened. That, that, that might be new slang that I don't know about because... Yeah. Yeah. Well, you're Apparently, not a Trekkie, so well, you if you look know. it up on Urban no, Dictionary, like, it's definitely going to say that it is. <laughs> yeah, because we were talking to our friend Jody the other day, and she said uh, her kids said something was sweaty, and apparently that means cool now. Oh. Sweaty. So queef could mean cool now too. I'm sorry, Who knows? The children are saying things are sweaty to mean cool. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm glad I'm an adult. Well, sweat <laughs> is the body's cooling system. How okay. has today's English substitute? I don't know if that's yeah. why. It's just uh, I'm trying to help I everyone. I would love wrap the wordplay in that case, yeah, but right? I doubt it. I doubt it very yeah. much. In yeah, fact, their, their slang we, is. If we tell them that, they'll stop using yeah. it. Mm-hmm. Now their slang is scientifically based. Now <laughs> it's uh, kid tested, mother approved. Strong strong enough for a man, made for a woman. Smells like fresh roasted peanuts. Something your body needs anyway. (laughs) Science. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. All right. Uh We we haven't had a chance to address all the news over the last two weeks. Oh, was there? What happened? (laughs) What what happened? I don't know. Everything's a blur. Gilbert Gottfried died. He did. Oh yeah. Rest in peace to Gilbert Gottfried. I gasped when I found that out. (gasps) <gasps> yeah lost a bunch old comedians recently yeah. yeah there was a picture that gilbert godfrey took with louis anderson and bob saget semi-recently and wow was, uh, yeah like isn't that crazy though yeah it's i creepy. forgot that louis anderson They're died like, till right now it's like the comedy equivalent of like chubby checker richie valens and the and the big bopper i think you and mean i mean buddy, uh, holly. buddy holly yeah and not chubby checker not chubby checker he's uh, he might still be alive well, who fact. was the fat guy on the plane <laughs> The Big Bopper? That's the one. Yeah. Is that why they called him the Big Bopper? Uh, he was a DJ. He's uh, he's too creepy. He was big. Uh, he bopped. I don't know if he's creepy what his song is. Is he, he the Chantilly Lace? Is yeah. that him? Who you what? Uh, yeah. You mm, what? A ponytail hanging down. <laughs> 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 yeah. Deeply disgusting. Anyway. anyway, where were we? He's dead now. Um, what else? Did, what's been going on, guys? Give me some. 
<laughs> it's just kind of we ate a bunch of food. It's, it's crazy weather, huh? Spring has sprung. It snowed this it morning. It snowed this morning, and uh, everybody yeah. freaked out for a second. We reconnected with Joe Charnews. Oh, yeah. He uh, used to be on Bloody Good Horror. Uh, now he does sm- Small Town Failing. Yeah. Which is hilarious if you haven't heard it. Yep. He talks about Lifetime movies, mm-hmm. which is a good fit for Joe for some I reason. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was on an episode, uh, fortunately. So look, look me up. Look him up. Look up. Look, look my up. episode up, and that's and that's it. He's in the book. It's pretty sweaty. <laughs> so sweaty. <laughs> the sweatiest. Ooh, we're gonna kill it. Yeah. I mean, it Let's is try. Use it. It's pretty sweaty, we'll kill it. but it also has its queef moments. It does. <laughs> it's it's a sweaty queef. queef. Yeah, it's kind of queef. Wait, how? In what manner? Okay, do I want you to define queef for me? Uh, it just means sweet. <laughs> oh, okay. Sweet, innocent, cute, uh, wholesome. Just like a queef. Just like a queef. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love that. I love this. All yeah. of this is good. Tongue tied is what happens. New words is what comes out. <laughs> <laughs> we do a lot of sloganeering tonight. <laughs> pizza, pizza. <laughs> Elise would say we sound like Kim Gordon. Do they, st- do, do they still say that? Is that still their slogan, Pizza it, Pizza? That, yes. I hope, why yeah. is that? You, only okay. get, you don't get two anymore. Not for the same price. Yeah. It's just pizza. It's, it's just five bucks. You now. don't even really get one. Actual pizza. No, you get like whatever that is. You get whatever yeah. that is. Someone told me it was made from cat milk, the cheese, it, which I said, that <laughs> doesn't make sense because that's real are much milk. bigger. <laughs> You know, and whatever that Caesars is. is like a fucking national chain. You think they're going to like, think about the number of cats it would take. <laughs> and that's where I came at it from a very logical standpoint. I'd like to think I, who's I milking won the these argument. cats. Um, professionals. I think. <laughs> <laughs> is it ben Stiller? the Ben Stiller Institute for cat milk training? Ben Stiller. <laughs> oh, meet the parents. You can milk anything. Yeah. You got, you got nipples. I got nipples. Oh, you, can yeah. you milk me? Uh, last movie. time I had a uh, little Caesars. I gave that me movie. Food. I got food poisoning from Little Caesars. Yeah, I haven't I, had it in three years. I think we all have it. When you get it from eating point. Little Caesars, it's not called food poisoning. <laughs> it's just called food. <laughs> it's because I'm not, my body's not attuned to cat milk. You're it's not a, supposed to eat shit at all. fuck around and find out yeah. itis that Although, you have. <laughs> that pizza that was like pretzel with cheddar cheese or whatever in You it, can say that if you want. That sounds fucking great. But you'd be wrong. Yeah. Oh, Taco Bell is bringing back the Mexican pizza officially. Good. Yeah. Okay. Act of Congress. <laughs> if that's what it took, I'm glad I wrote mm. those ten thousand letters. <laughs> <laughs> you wrote resist. Did you, you call your senator and everything? Every, every time you got a resist by thing, instead yep. of <laughs> texting what they said, you just texted back. <laughs> Bring back my <laughs> 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 And they're like, I guess that's what our constituents want. I mean, this lady won't stop. Legislate it, <laughs> <laughs> and she'll legislate it. Oh shit! Because oh. she's gonna <laughs> eat it. Oh my god! I want Taco Bell. This is a Monday night show for sure. Oh yes. my god! I was gonna make hot dogs for dinner, and I have these buns. <laughs> yeah, you do. Yeah, he does. Boy, do I! <laughs> they are so old, but they yeah, look. They are. They, these are old, old buns. <laughs> but they look good, don't but they? But they look fine, and yeah. they're soft. <laughs> Your buns, you got you got forty four year old buns, but they look twenty two. I didn't see yeah. any mold on them at all, and I was like, I could steam these buns, and I could cook these weenies. Oil them up. And then I'm not wasting anything. So you go put your weenies between some buns. I'm trying to be more frugal since now I'm a musician. Oh my gosh! And I, I've ho- I've heard those people; their lives are terrible. Send Freddie tips on how to not have a terrible life as yeah. a musician, or, or or just send him some uh, hot dog buns. Don't you want musicians to have oh. the drug? <laughs> Do we want to talk about the thing we were just talking about before we started recording? Uh, the Italian about the problem? Italians. Oh, oh the Italian problem. <laughs> I don't know what we're supposed to do. Do we do anything? Somebody else is using our podcast name. And they're Italian. Thanks and they're to, their top result when you elect so yeah, on Amazon yeah, be, music. Yeah. Be careful if you sign up for the patron Patreon. Don't uh, support this. <laughs> don't make accidentally sure, subscribe to them. Make There's sure a really easy way to tell. There are no skulls it doesn't look like <laughs> yeah. anywhere on their stuff. Oh, I mean, their logo looks pretty good. They did a good job. Uh, is it is it horror? I don't know. I don't know. But there are no skulls. <laughs> I didn't see any skulls. I didn't see any skulls. But I will say that uh, we got to figure out how to fix that. But I don't even know how to contact these guys. And I got to be honest, I wasn't impressed. I have to go back and look now. You said that. Did you I, listen to it and you couldn't understand a word? No, no. I gave. <laughs> I, I meant. I meant their logo. I gave it a glance and I wasn't. Uh, yeah. I mean, it looked okay. It was like neon. 
<laughs> well, that doesn't mean it's good. Yeah, I it's, like, it's, I it's, like it, neon. It's, that's all he needs. <laughs> Don't you Is understand? it sweaty? <laughs> Is it sweaty? <laughs> what part of neon didn't you hear? I'll let you know. <laughs> it's pretty sweaty. Freddy votes sweaty. <laughs> sweaty Freddy over here. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I have no, I'm nothing against it. I mean, if it was on purpose, I'm I want to be a dry guy. It could just be an accident. <laughs> coincidence parallel thinking this dry sure guy over it here is, but at the same time like yeah because we... if if they were to uh piggyback off of a podcast it'd be something more popular yeah you, you <laughs> guys done fucked up uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah we're gonna piggyback you yeah, yeah we want the sweet sweet italians let's, listening. Get, the, let's get their patrons yeah, yeah we're get, all that it's we're get, rolling in the lira that's what mm, their yeah. mon, uh, well, I think money is right the euro is that are the euro now Probably for a very long time. No, you can still okay. get Lira. <laughs> can you? Yeah, I don't. I think you can use both. No. Okay. Yeah, we still use Lira, or they still use Lira. How do you know this? My pr- my previous life. Oh. My when using life. Lira, do not operate heavy machinery. <laughs> 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 ask your doctor if Lira is right for you. <laughs> not all. So anyway, if anybody Lira. knows like Gloria Allred or something, we need a high. Powered lawyer. Or even Gloria Sumred. <laughs> we'll settle. <laughs> <laughs> no. That was a good one. That was good. <laughs> God, I hate you. That was a very um, a queefy joke. Thank very you. sweet. Very <laughs> joke. Do you guys want to see if this movie's roulette was queefy or not? Yeah. Or maybe it's sweaty. We don't know. We're going to find out. We're going to find out <laughs> together. Hello, boys and girls. It's time for straight to video Russian roulette. Our subject today is Simon McNeil. He's a self-professed medium. He's almost here. For those of you that don't know, I've recently lost my son, Miles. People like Simon like to prey on grief. Ready whenever you are. I need complete darkness. Or rather, they do. dead have stories there is a place where these horrors are transcribed i'm not sure where i'm going i felt like i was being followed we're headed to ravenmore is it a nice place no yeah the dead they're so much closer than you realize i wasn't planning on stopping i just think i'm really tired you're safe here. I just have a thing with noises. It's neurological. Would have probably been better if I just didn't stop taking the meds. This trailer, it's, it's, it's still happening. It wants to live with us. They really want to drive home how long this movie is by giving it a long trailer. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, do, but hey, hey, ho, ho. Don't, I haven't revealed whether I liked it or didn't like it. Yet. Okay. Start your book report on Books of Blood. Books of Blood on Hulu, right? Mm-hmm. As we just discussed earlier, you heard, and also from way back in the news, I'm sure an intrepid listener could find it. Uh, Clyde Barker Books of Blood was they were doing a, a thing I guess they were going to do a series on Hulu and then for whatever reason they were like nah and I remember at the time when we read it I was like oh these aren't even stories from Books of Blood so except maybe one or two fuck this and I said fuck this and then I got the movie version of it for Russian Roulette and it, it is it looks like they got about two and a half episodes done <laughs> And then they made a movie out of it. But I actually did like this movie a lot. Oh. But oh. it's not perfect. <laughs> but. I, didn't, but. I didn't suspect that it was perfect. <laughs> it's not. It's got. It's flawed. It's deeply flawed, but it, it, gets, it gets you in the end. And I'll tell you what. It's a flawed butt. It's a flawed butt. <laughs> but in the end, 
in the end and but it just you move those in words around as much as you can and you'll get it um right. so roll them around your mouth yeah mm, you can almost chew them the um so <laughs> there i'm not gonna spoil too much of this because i do recommend it for those who like a long slow movie that then right when you're about to be fucking over it <laughs> and you're like holy goddamn fucking shit <laughs> I'm about done with this. Then they will drop a thing on you and you'll be like, Ooh, oh, oh, that's really dark. In. And, uh, so only one, as far as I know, only the one story book of blood, um, is from Clive Barker's books of blood. Now I could be wrong. It could have, the other bit bits and pieces of the other two might've been, um, in one of the stories that I missed or don't remember, but it wasn't a pamphlet of blood. I definitely didn't read every story in pamphlet. all like six or seven volumes. So, um, but I don't think so. I think these, cause one was like a rip from the headlines kind of thing, but in a good way, in a creepy, in a, in a really horrible way, like horrible, good, good in yeah. a horrible way, horrible, like in a, a good story way. we would know. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like is that a is that a spoiler to say what it was? Uh yeah, yeah, it will oh, be okay. a spoiler to say oh, what it was. So, uh but you have two and a half stories happening ish in in this and they all whether they they meant to connect them or just did it because they knew they were going to make a movie. They did manage to connect all three in a, in, a, in a pretty interesting way. Um and so the one we start off with is the story of this girl who, as you may have heard in the trailer, much like Freddie, she hates mouth sounds. Except, oh, yeah. except on a on a um, fucking neurological level, like it fucking she it, she just hear. Imagine, remember what you heard the chips and the shit on yeah. the mic. Imagine if you cranked it in your headphones, but it was just everyone on a train with you. You could hear them eating and oh yeah, it, so, rustling and. And we'll just eat mouth sounds. Mouth sounds. Yeah, I just made a gross like swallowing sound. But I didn't hear it. Well, I mi I muted my microphone the second time. Oh, so I apologize to anyone else who suffers from that. I, I, like I don't know if anyone <laughs> suffers from that ex other than the, the girl lady? in this movie. But yeah. um, so she is also she's got a lot of problems. Um, she's supposed to be on medication, and you, first you get some what feel there are moments that feel very cheesy and corny and like where the acting you're like i don't know but then they kind of bring you back around and they they kind of mess with your expectations i um a little bit i think um so that story is not from a clive barker thing and um it has a really weird it's it's like two stories and it has a really it, it has this journey it starts with her here right and then it goes in this whole other thing over here, past the middle, and goes over here. And around then, the corner where the fudge is Or where made. the fudge is made. <laughs> or up your button around the corner, as it's also well known as. <laughs> and th then there's this whole other thing. You're like, you think it's a thing, and then you realize it's an even worse thing, oh. and it's deeper, but, it's, but you're still corny, and it's long. And by the time you're getting there, you're like, Holy shit. And you know something is <laughs> happening. There is something. You, you always know it's happening. But you're never sure if this is like good enough or interesting enough to keep you going. And then it is. Corny long shit. It, then it is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what it's like. Boy, we just never don't get those poop jokes in. No, you have to. Uh, it's like speed. If I don't get so many in, we explode. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. Um we should just do a loop of the podcast. <laughs> Did you know Twister's from the director of Speed? <laughs> I don't know. I watched the trailer again recently, and it was like from the director Roland of Emmerich? Speed. Is that who did it? I don't remember. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, isn't it Jan de Bont? Maybe. Yeah, Maybe. I, don't I think know. you're right. Did I, did, I, did I just make up that name? I was, yes. I was looking for like, a, a, I was looking for a memorable quote from Twister, and there aren't any. Uh, Except for, it's a little five. That's good enough. But then that could be, that's, you know, is that even identifiable? Really? Twister was directed by Jan de Bont. Good job, Andy. You're amazing. A plus. Yeah. Um, Who also directed Speed. So then, so now you think you've moved into another story. And it is, but it's also the same story. Then, <laughs> shit, here we go. Yeah. And here's what, I, here's what I realized in the in the four or five days that I watched this movie, that I spent watching it. It is long, you guys. 
and it feels long. <laughs> like it's, I think uh-huh. it's, I, I want to say it's, it's over two hours. It's like a two hour plus movie and not like two hour. Oh five. It's like two hours and 10, 20, something That's like too that. Much. It's a long movie. Um, and it feels it's length <laughs> and girth. Okay. Yeah. You're going to feel stretched <laughs> afterwards, but yeah. some places you're going to come pretty hard. <laughs> and look at this. All right. So, I realized watching it that that is exactly how Clive Barker's writing is. Yeah. It's so boring sometimes. Like now some of you are like, hush your mouth. You hush your mouth. <laughs> I've got cred on this. I've read a shit ton of it more than once. I know what I'm talking about. And it's boring. Sometimes Clive Barker is boring as fucking balls and he draws shit out and he doesn't pay attention Kelly, to details. Hush your mouth. <laughs> Hush your mouth. Hush your mouth. <laughs> Nobody, he doesn't pay attention to important details. He just skips over shit. And it's but but then yeah. he does something so disgusting <laughs> and so and the depths of which are so horrifying. Yeah. That you're like, oh, well, that made all of that worth it. And yeah. then you re-examine all of it, the rest of it. And that's kind of what this movie did. It really, I feel like it captured the spirit <laughs> of his writing like really well. And the, 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 the one story then is, this is the book of blood, which is sort of like the intro story, I think to the, to the um, collections. And it's a really good representation of that story. And I think they go outside of the bounds of the original story. I think much like where Candyman, which is based on the forbidden, the forbidden is, is a much simpler, smaller story. If listeners could see what I'm doing, I'm doing a gesture. Smaller. I'm smalling. I'm doing yeah. like You're a, smalling. I'm doing like a death star smalling. garbage compactor yeah, with I, my hands. And I read that as more of like your, your chest, You're hugging. your chest cavity had opened and you're pulling it back together. That's oh. possible too. Uh, that's very Clive Barker, but mu- it, it is exactly like that. So much like that. I feel like they've sort of went above and outside of the bounds in a really good way. Um, and the acting actually was pretty solid a- as it turned out. And again, there were some really dark twists. Um, now some people are not going to like this for sure. It is, it is also, it's flawed here and there, but ultimately I really liked it. And I found myself thinking about it later and, um, so there is some real good horror in there, I think. Cool. I mean, so it's definitely Let's if you're out. if you're just curious or you like Clive Barker, um, I don't know if you'll like it if you like him, but I, I to me it represented if you're re- if you're real about him, <laughs> if you're ready to keep it real, if you're, re- if you're ready to keep it real, <laughs> if you hush up, <laughs> you, I, go on the journey because it, it does feel even the ones that aren't necessarily written by him it feels very Clive Barker even in the kind of like cheesiness of it in in moments because like, then he brings I like you. the Cool Ranch Clive Barker. <laughs> Have you had helping you blast, Clive Barker? I haven't. I haven't. <laughs> oh, you're gonna have to smoke a cigar a day for 400 <laughs> years if you want to eat those, man. Otherwise, your mouth is gonna get bag of broken glass flavor. Yep. <laughs> 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 anyway, uh, yeah. so it is definitely a recommend, but like, uh, don't blame me if you don't like it because some people ain't gonna like it. Fair enough. That makes sense to me. Um. So Kelly, since you you want to do the honors of spinning this goofy ass wheel. Oh, for y'alls? Freddie yeah, is just give her a asking Kelly to spin the goddamn wheel. See who's gonna watch the next one. Why am I singing? Mm. So sorry. Blink. It's coming. <laughs> Amy! Amy! Congratulations. You guys are going to be happy that Come it was on made. down. Fifth nomination, her first win. So Freddie <laughs> is responsible for this. Um, and I'm so glad that you found this. To be has oh, yeah. uh, uh, starting to acquire something's pl- something's exclusives. I think it's Andy. Oh, okay. I thought it was one of yeah. our phones. No, I think we're all right. <laughs> um, to be has started like putting up their own exclusive content now. Yeah. yeah. And there's this movie they started putting, they just put up called Titanic 666. What? Yeah. 666. A um, lot. Dark uh. forces from the deep rise to the surface, terrorizing all aboard Titanic 3 and threaten to repeat one of history's greatest disasters. Don't we ever learn? 
starring Anna Lynn McCord. And you're like, why do I know that name? Oh, She's the know. one who wrote that poem and filmed herself reading it about how if she was Vladimir Putin's mother, he never would have been uh, a warmongering fuckface. Ah, Anna Lynn McCord did that? Yeah. So, you know how I found this? I would never have known this existed yeah. if I hadn't watched our buddy Henrik Couteau's Boggy Creek, the TV series, mm-hmm. or Boggy Creek, the series. The it, If you search Tubi, it's on there. Yes. And it is goofy ass fun. It's uh like park rangers investigating Bigfoot and it's it's shoestring. Does it take place in in uh, Falk, Arkansas? I think so. Nice. I'm not really 100% sure. Honestly, I think it does. You I you should watch it, Kelly. I know I'm yeah. going to. It's uh it's really fun. I love the Bigfoot suit in it. And uh Brinky Stevens is in it as an old witch. No, I, I, I'm i definitely going to check it. I yeah. was really excited when I saw you post Eric it. Roberts narrates it. Yeah. Oh. It's, uh, and it's real, it's just that fun pro-am hodgepodge like the actors are committed to what they're doing despite whatever they are, wherever they are on the spectrum talent-wise, and it, it makes it a lot of fun. I love that. I do too. Yeah. Well, let's hope I come out of Titanic 666 feeling that same way. Yeah. Let's hope you don't have a sinking feeling. Oh, dear. <laughs> I'll let you know why it's Titanic 3. What happened to 2? They probably sank, too. Oh. Titanic 2. Remember that? That exists, you know. They made a the, title, the title no, the, makes the, it. There's another boat. Oh, they made a Titanic 2? Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm a real dumbass then. Uh, the title of this makes it sound like they went through 665 versions yeah. of the Titanic, bef- right. and they all sank. And they're like, this one's going to be the one. <laughs> right. I'm excited. I think um, the the open sea is a great place for horror. It is. It's isolated. Yeah. Do you think they filmed on the open sea? It's the implication. Bitch, I don't know. It's the implication. <laughs> it's implied. It's it's wet. Mm-hmm. I can hear it. I can hear how wet it is. Did you did you want to do the main attraction? That would be great. Okay. Mm-hmm. that this trailer doesn't have any dialogue in it. This movie is about an orchestra that... Here it is. That's why I'm going to keep away from you. Here we go. You know... What? I wonder why I'm like that. Like what? I'm never thinking about anybody except myself. Well, you don't think I'd go without you. You mean that, Stan? Absolutely. You satisfied? Oh, Stan, I don't care for nothing now. Nothing in the world. You're not a regular MD, are you? Of course not. But anything my patients reveal to me is as sacred as though it were given under the seal of the confessional. That clear? All right, all right. You don't have to get on a soapbox. I'm going to be strictly on the level about this whole thing myself. I don't think he is. (laughs) That trailer... Doesn't say anything about the circus. Yeah. No, it yeah, does. Can go, you? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Can you? Does it convey the horror of the the movie? Because that's just a lot of talking. I'm sorry. Uh, that was uh, just a shit trailer, really. It oh. didn't even flash did dramatic make, words on the screen. Like when did when did the trailer become a thing? Always. I don't know. Oh my god, we should look it up. We sometime. should know that. Uh, we don't. should we? I don't know. Anyway, uh, Nightmare Alley, 1947. I thought this was dope. Me too. I really liked I it. I really liked it. Was it was a little long. But it's, you got to think about it. But yeah. It, well, it, it ended like five times. True. So yeah. I do. <laughs> I hear what you're saying. I also, uh, this did feel long. 
Mm-hmm. It felt its length also <laughs> and its girth. Yes. <laughs> but um, it was it was really well done. It was super well done. And it's like I this movie is came out at a time that's really interesting for to watch, I think, because it's post-war. So it feels like um like the 50s because it's like it's 47 so it feels like a very 50s kind of movie but also a very 40s movie this the hairstyles and shit is all very <laughs> yeah but, but movies looked like this until like 1960 yeah. or, or past or past yeah and um it just had a very modern feel um i don't modern, you think yeah i thought it was some, I, I just free me it just felt um very so property in parts very melodramatic it, it, yeah that's what i'm trying to like uh just a lot of people talking well it's definitely a, a pot boiler yeah just just a lot of dialogue it's talking that, 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 that i don't think necessarily it got repetitive a little bit for me mm. yeah i think they could have tightened it up in spots for sure but um i thought the thing was fucking acted like really well and not oh yeah not what I'm used to of movies of this era. It was less stilted. It was, and the like, except for certain characters, of course, like Molly. You know, there. But, but even she, I, I thought she did. I, I think that's how that role was probably written yeah. and directed. Yeah. Um, she was kind of the naive girl. Yeah. Um, but I, I really thought. Um, also, just the uh, fuck. What was I going to say? I don't know. You're talking about the acting, and then Molly. And then, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, the gray. I, I also felt like, in, in, in some of the ways, I felt like this was modern, too. And we'll get to this character. Like, you have a very strong, I mean, of course, she turns out to be a femme fatale. So it's not like a, a you know, but you have this professional uh, psychologist lady. She's got a job. Like, she has her own practice. Oh, that was pretty cool. Mm-hmm. You know, I, I like how it's progressive you, that character just appears in the middle of this movie yeah and then disappears again yeah because you have what stanton right he's the um he's a guy who has recently joined the circus because he doesn't want a day job well, it's, a, it's a traveling it's a freak car, show yeah. yeah but i mean he is it, you know yeah six of one uh half a dozen Seven chickens geek one geek minus divided by mm-hmm. beard lady uh but stanton uh he joins as kind of a jack of all trades at first yeah and he is admiring uh xena and her partner's act what was her partner's pete. name pete pete pete's an old drunk yeah um, it's real sad it is oh, real sad. his story that actually really i got got to me that yeah. guy really acted the shit out of that role yeah yeah man he, it was really just kind of pitiful he had the dt's and, and that was the thing I think this movie did. Too. I feel like this, I mean, obviously some the psychology is outdated and stuff, but I felt like they really tried to sympathize even the worst characters and they tried to come at this from a, a I mean, obviously there's a bunch of religious shit thrown in. I think it's kind of a, I don't even know if it's really part of the theme. Surfacy. Or, well, I think that's part of, Stanton was raised in an orphanage, but probably by nuns. Well, as he says he that, yeah. and, um, so I think the religion versus the, um, the psychology is what's butting heads here in this, but, um, they really handle a lot of their characters very sensitively. Like there's even the bad guy, like there, I don't feel like there's, everyone is just sort of living this existence. It's like, I felt like it was really, that's why I think it's kind of modern. Yeah, I agree with you. Like it is pretty subtle as far as what motives you, and. What do you mean by when you said bad guy? I can't even really. Well, that's think what I mean. Villain. I mean, technically, it's, Stan. Well, it's like because yeah. nobody is obviously bad. Like it's not black or white. I mean, he's a. Con- I mean, he's doing. Like, but he becomes a bad guy, and he's conning people yeah. out of money and stuff. But it is. But also, I mean, he's a complex character. Again, I I texted you guys. I don't know how you felt about this. He felt very Don Drapery to me. Yeah. Yeah, I could like see just that. making up a whole person, you know, yeah. just like creating Taking on a whole life. Yeah. I wouldn't be shocked his. if the writers of Mad Men were big fans of this. Character. I wouldn't either. It felt very Mad Men in places. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm not. So. The, I don't watch Mad Men. I just know of it pop culturally, but <laughs> pop culturally. So. But uh, I, I feel like I've heard enough from y'all's and he, others. It is. It has infused him with some knowledge. Yeah, just that basic pop culture air out there. Yeah. Um. He finds out, Stan, he finds out that Xena and Pete used to be very successful um, using a very uh, valuable p- 
proprietary code that they uh, figured out to swindle people. Mm-hmm. Just like, remember, was his name John Edwards, right? Was not John the, Edwards? The, not the politician. but no, the, I, I know you mean the psychic. Did he get unquote. found out that way? Well, oh, he was using all the same tricks. Oh, of course. No, no, and, no. And I, meant, like, I mean, like 48 hours or somebody did an investigation on them, too, yeah. like where they kind of, you know, all those. They're all, it's all bullshit. And this is stuff that you still see happening and people still fall for it. Well, Freddie. I'm just saying. He's just saying. I know. I so, do love how they do. They do kind of straddle the possibility of the supernatural very much like in a universal monsters kind of style with a tarot reading. Yeah. And then you do kind of question maybe Xena might have something here because her cards are s- sometimes correct. Yeah. She does read tarot and they are. Yeah. It's a but, nice subtle. Uh, it's a nice subtle touch. Yeah. To just give it a little bit more mystery. It, it kind of it gives it the the uh, the exotic part of the pulp story yeah. that you're looking for. And it's got the tight T-shirt. Other the other part where the men wear the tight T-shirt. Tight T-shirts and. Yeah. Um, I, the, I tell you, the the figure of the geek in this movie is such a scary. Just the idea of it. You like, never see him up close. You never see him up close, and the way they t- like, it's just this boogeyman. And like, I really now I the one. It's not a complaint. This movie ended the way a lot of movies at the time did. I thought it was going to end even darker. It was originally dead end where you think it, yeah, you th- where you feel it should have ended, yeah, is the original ending, and then the producers were like, uh, "This is too dark," but that extra ending actually worked as a great bookend because he becomes Pete, yeah, and no, she I know, becomes Zena. No, I I did think that too, and so it does yeah. it does work, absolutely. but it's not as effective as him being the geek. No, and I'm not even saying it's it it doesn't work. As, it just for me like that uh, that's such a like oh you know what moment with a geek I really love what is the line the geek has the heebie jeebies again yep <laughs> and, and you just see him screaming and running around in the background you know it's like he he and it's like he's escaped his pen yeah no it's it's like yeah, it is what it's like and then Stan gets the heebie jeebies later yeah and um whatever it, that means it's such a dark it, it's just so dark the way they portray it and just like the bottom of the bottom and you're a monster and you're not a person and you just live that way. And that's so getting the ending that we get, it's like, well, he probably is still going to end up geeking for this carnival or maybe he's going to die the way <laughs> Pete did. And the way Pete died, like dialing back to the first this act is where yeah. the movie surprised me. Yeah. Yeah. Because I thought they were going to go with, so you have this scene where Stan's just hanging out backstage at night He's got himself a bottle of liquor. He's going to enjoy it. But then he sees Pete wandering Yeah, didn't around. he buy it off of the... One of the guys that works. One of the guys. Because that- Pete's been shut down. Like, uh, Zena has made sure no one will give him more alcohol because yeah. she has him on a diet of one shot per day. He's almost... I mean, he is at the end. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's very... Like, he, he He's barely yeah. functioning as a person at all. So Stan sees him and they had, and you know, he's begging him to buy him some liquor, give him some liquor and Stan feels bad for him and gives him the bottle that he had hidden when he saw Pete coming. He gives him that bottle. He hid it in Xena's prop trunk. Yeah. And then they have this really great scene where Pete gets to kind of talk about who he was and how he used to perform. And, you know, as he's drinking this stuff and starting to feel better and, and Stan is very kind to yes, him. Yes. It yeah. was a, it was kind of an, it was a nice scene. It was t- yeah. And he, you know, Pete goes off to bed, you know, then the next morning Pete's dead. I thought initially that they were going to, I knew Stan was going to become some sort of bad guy. He already came off as a greasy little grease man. Yeah. But, I was, I thought they were going to have him deliberately, like he, him giving that him the liquor. He knew it was going to kill him or something, Yeah. but it turns out to be an, a pure accident. I thought that at first. And then I also thought what's crazy when they find out, I was like, somebody tried to fucking kill Stan. Cause I didn't get yeah. that they were switched. So I thought somebody gave him a bottle of wood alcohol Oh yeah, because and he, then he gave it to the other. Yeah, he went into the pro. It's the alcohol they were using to burn the um quote unquote burn the uh the answers yeah. earlier in the scene when they bring the paper it's answers too up much from for the a audience. Human body. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like they had been using this to do this Stan illusion. Stan just gave him the wrong bottle. It wasn't looking. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I don't even know if Stan gave it to him. I think he did give it yeah. to him. Hand, handed it to him. Yes. Oh yeah, because I, I and I know he just. That, that he did a great job uh, Tyron Power 
the next morning where he's the showing of just the the horror and the guilt of it but not yeah. announcing it yeah you know he never says a word about it and he kind of just slinks out of there like homer through the bushes you know well there's a lot of backstory there again <laughs> i feel like this character has like all a lot of kindness that has, has been kind of beaten out like growing up in an orphanage like you 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 get a lot of he's probably been on the rails probably hoboed you know yeah like you do he's hoboed but he's never geeked never geeked yet he got the heebie-jeebies once <laughs> he cleared it right up with he, some he mississippi right sunshine <laughs> but now with pete dead he's clear to become xena's new partner oh and she, he's been banging her yeah, oh yeah like that was always the you know was he definitely banging xena absolutely trying to at first no i'm pretty sure they were they were banging pre pete dying yeah i don't think there was any okay. uh i don't think there was any doubt about that i mean they were making out and stuff but they're definitely banging all right this is a carnival he's banging xena he's, Put the carnival he's learning carnival. the code doing a great job they're really like and he wants ass. to bang molly don't forget that he's also hitting the shit on Molly yes. while her strongman boyfriend, like right in front of that dude's face. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's not really, you know, the thing is like, I don't think she wants him as a boyfriend. He just kind of thinks he's her boyfriend. Well, or it's like before he was the best option. <laughs> See, I, that's yeah. how I saw it. Like this Bruno. guy is the best option. This is pretender folks um, at the carnival. Yeah. And so she's like, well, he's strong and he's, yeah. you know, it was him or the geek. I love when he says savvy. Like, yeah, that's such a fucking pass way to say you get me. He's I'm a, gonna start using it. It's a cool Ooh. character. Well, you know that Jack Sparrow also does that. I know. Sure. Well, that's what he reminded. Yeah, me. I yeah. Got, yeah. And, uh, he's also. A it was also kind of a Wolverine-ish kind of delivery. Yeah, it was a real cool noiry moment. I yeah. liked it. I love that tough guy. Ron shit Perlman, sometimes. I feel like would play that guy now. Wait, actually, I think he is in the uh, remake. Is he that guy? Is he Bruno? Yeah. Is he play I Bruno? Think I don't know. Oh, okay. I, I, I don't know. I saw it, but I didn't well, we, necessarily care for it. So it's interesting the way you talk about this movie and just the compare and contrast with the original and the remake. It's a uh, mix. After seeing the, I saw the um, the remake first, but uh, after seeing this one, it makes me appreciate the original a lot more because uh, Guillermo del Toro goes like complete one eighty. Where oh, did this he movie's... make the remake? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't know he that. He directed it, yeah. Yeah, oh. this, like, uh, he is very obvious about everybody's villainy and motivations and everything, where this, the re original is, like, more subtle and doesn't, like, force feed you down, oh. force feed you all the, yeah. like, uh, story beats and everything. That's why I didn't care for the remake, because it was so obvious what was going to happen, and... This one kind of made you kept you guessing a little bit. Yeah, and not, Andy's as opposed the, to the outcome. Andy's the only one of us that's seen the remake. Yeah, so um, we have discussed maybe doing a bonus episode once we've seen it. Yeah, I'm really interested to hear you guys' <laughs> thoughts about that because, like I said, they're to me they're com two completely different movies, yeah. even though they have the same you know story and everything. So you get to this act two point five after he has been. Uh, successfully doing nightclub acts. He's promoted himself aft out of the carnival because uh, he realizes that Molly or Holly, what's Molly. Her name? Molly, 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 Molly. Oh, they yeah. end up married too, by the way. Yeah, they they get married. They get shotgun wedding by they the, get busted. the strong man. Yeah, they get busted. <laughs> they get busted kissing, and Bruno's like, "So you gonna marry her?" Like Jesus, dude. He didn't like stick it in. And, uh, but then, and then Xena also, because of course she's been mm -hmm. banging fucking Stan and teaching him the fucking code and shit. Code. She built him up. And then and Molly's been learning it just because she's there. Helping. Yeah. Helping. She, she's helping Xena train him. So she knows it too now. And so they do end up married and on the, on the road. Yeah. Doing these As fancy the, nightclubs. The great Stanton. He's the great Stanton. And, and he's, he's yeah. got that. He's got that. This is why I kept thinking like just advertising and not, he's got that. I know how to market myself to these people. I know uh -huh. how to keep plussing it and plussing it. And what I'm going to do, like he starts talking about like spook shows. I mean, I think like the talk to the dead yeah. psychic stuff, because up to this point, it's kind of been a mentalist act where it's yeah. like, no one's been led to believe that there's been really a supernatural element. And like there's no real personal connection. No. And then, um, so now he's talking about doing that, but yes, they've been doing like these, the successful nightclub 
and then we bring to so I just want to catch up. The oh details no, no, to no! Where I you like, get us I at like two point five? Yeah. So the um, so this is where they introduce the psychologist character mm-hmm. who is in the audience who thinks she's going to trick him because she knows he's a charlatan. And it's a very um, modern m- yeah. moment. I felt like it really is. It's a great moment because like it's so sophisticated because it, it could have simply been she busted him. Yeah. But it's important that she doesn't publicly expose him as a fraud because otherwise act three can't happen. Right. So, and it becomes like this great little cat and mouse. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and so he and realizes he gets some free therapy, yeah. how, how slick she is. Yeah. And he ends up going, um, confessing she, what he did with Pete to her. And she wants to, she wants to actually at first her motives seem pure. She wants to help people. But as it turns out, you know, once he gives her this bad idea, this evil idea mm-hmm. that she that she should take her patient's records and use them to manipulate people in future schemes and scams. Oh yeah, because another monitor thing she she records her um, all of her sessions on a uh, on like a, a turn to like a, a basically a wax record a wax yeah. record. It's very Dracula, thing. very Dracula, um, which I thought was a modern touch for that too. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Well, I I, pretty cool. I saw her like. She, I think she was the mastermind behind the whole thing. I think she kind of planted that seed in his mind anyway, because I, I feel like she was yeah. the puppet master behind the whole thing. I no, think I, think, I, I agree fully with you. expected somehow Zena and Bruno to be behind this downfall in some way. Like they teamed up with her. Mm-hmm. Eh, That's too much. I, mean, I know. I'm glad actually, they did it. The but reason I, I like this movie so like much is did. because. It shows how a person, when they hit that pivot point, you're not always bad, you're not always good, but she, she really hears what what um, Stanton's telling her. This doctor or the psychologist does when he says, "Do you know what we could do with this information?" At first, I do buy but, her being resistant. To yeah, that. But the the fact that she recorded everything, I think she had other motives for recording them in the first place. I don't think so. I I, I honestly don't, and I it's psychiatrists sometimes i don't know if they still do that but that was a practice that some of them did to help their patients they could go back and review the the recordings and yeah i don't think that was a nefarious thing and i'm not even sure like i don't know if it is or isn't like i, I can see an argument made for both as far as like for me i uh, i wasn't sure if she was gen if she was a little shady or not shady until she had the uh, like i get where all you guys are coming from i but i think for me it's because i saw the remake first and i think i kind of colored my opinion about everybody's motivations so maybe that was a mistake to go back and watch this because this movie's so subtle if they made it now andy it would be it would be that yeah it's like all the way back to the beginning maybe like i'm seeing things in this movie that aren't there because the remake just hit you over the head with everything and i can't get separate the two kind of could be because in a, in a modern a modern studio would not want a, a new character with such a big um, thumb on the scale of the story to be introduced right in the middle. They would in, they would insist yeah. that that character show up in the first act at some point, and then they build from there in the background if necessary until they turn up again. And this movie literally drops her in your lap. Yeah, and she's there. It's awesome. Yeah, Lady, it's a really get out of my lap. It's against the rules, and uh, yeah, it's it's sort of a Hitchcocky thing. Yeah, it's, they're very thought, Hitchcocky about what they do. <laughs> she was like just another like person he was manipulating, but it was it was it was wonderful to see that she, in fact, oh, the double cross yeah. was great. Got him. The double cross was great, and it really. But again, it was it really showed what the consequences of that like getting that sprung on him and her like cover up for it was beautiful. Like the whole, no, you're crazy. And it, like, it was really fucking good and devious. And, um, and it's, it basically, of course the spiral is his own fault because he built all this up and he played this very dangerous game. Mm. <laughs> um, but he didn't see this double cross coming and it happened. Cause you don't, I guess usually. And, uh, or it doesn't happen if you see it coming. You doesn't. You're not double crossed. Um, <laughs> but you're single crossed. <laughs> uh, but that's what sends him ultimately into this horrible rock bottom spiral down to hobodom and then almost geekdom. And he tells the dog story, which is he re- which Pete had told him on yeah. the night he died, and which had totally roped 
uh, Stanton in with it. Yeah. The, this because the sentimental attachment to the dog and how easy people are to manipulate, which is again, I think that's the cool thing about this movie is those moments of change in someone's morality and their rationalization play out on screen. Yeah. Nobody uh, uh, bribes the bad guy. Right. And it's yeah. what's great too is again, it can, they constantly humanize this character who is, who does go on to be again, your, your morally questionable, one of the many more morally questionable people in the morality of this film. And, but again, he's he is touched by it. Like this is a character who is not, like you said, he's not necessarily a bad person. Like he's right. sensitive. He he doesn't want to hurt people. I don't think. Really. And in a way, being the geek, kind of with him having to turn to geekery. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then to be pulled out of it, it. It that's why I really love how the new ending they added bookends with the beginning because he kind of goes back to what is. Is it turns out this job everybody th sees as as this fraudster type of position as a carny, that's where his integrity is. Yeah, is going back to and now he's just now he's just Pete, and sh and now Molly's just Zena. Yeah, exactly. And they're gonna play out that same story again. You know, it's it's like it's almost like a lesson in a kind of moderation. Like you can you can have some fuckery, you know up to a point and then when you're really hurting other people or taking advantage of other people yeah that's when that punishment starts creeping in on you you know like when he has to do the fake ghost scene and he makes molly dress up as the uh, politician's dead wife again that was really great scene mm -hmm. like and watching that guy like just be overcome and like watching her just not able to take it i was really mm -hmm. strong acting right and especially for the time and yeah. it shows that she was his jiminy cricket too because it's yeah. like there is a line that she will eventually crumble under you know not i wouldn't say necessarily draw a line but she kind of crumbles under the weight of whatever this latest scam is because she's the one who still has some of that integrity still yeah and what's great about this too is again i a lot of the i feel like a lot of pulp kind of noir stuff the characters are very like you, you got a lot of good and bad but like he never ab abandons like i feel like you would expect a character like this to just be all like care about nobody and at no point, like at, at every point until he sends her on her way for her own good, I mean, he did intend to stay with her. I think, I think he did love her, and in as much as he could love, you know, yeah. he probably would have stayed with Zena, but she kicked him out. Like, yeah, like he was looking for his. Holy shit, he was looking for a family. Oh, because he never. Because he was an orphan. Had one. <laughs> You know, it's so funny that they ended like, oh, we have to make the ending less horrifying, but the idea of just descending into chronic alcoholism. It's so pretty horrifying. It's just, you know, it's, it's not as horrifying more. as being a full blown geek. Though, it's not right? as, yeah. as, the, as the geek is presented in this movie, but it's still, yeah, but as you Jesus. say, it's still not a happy ending. <laughs> no one got a happy ending <laughs> that we could. No, it's tell. actually just witnessing the cycle start over again. Yeah. That was the best they could very, give you. Again, I think like this was someone was very into psychology that wrote this. this I've, I've never seen this any was of Tyrone that. Power's favorite movie that he made. I looked at his Wikipedia page when I found out the man was from Cincinnati. I was like, give me all the information. The director who did this, uh, Edmund Goulding, I've never seen a single other movie he's done, but uh, I've heard of many of them like Grand Hotel. I'm just adding shit to my list now because I think this guy is out of this world good. Okay. Oh, this will go bigly. Well, we're going to watch what he does from here on out and see. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> He's a real up and comer. <laughs> oh, my Lord. Hollywood's hottest young director. <laughs> is Edmund deceased, Goulding. Deceased 68 year old at the time, uh, Edmund Goulding. Emphasis on the ghoul. <laughs> All right. We have uh, coming up next week one more. Yeah. Who, yeah. What it, do we know what it is yet? Not yet. Okay. I mean, I might, but I'll let you know later. Okay. Um, and it's from our picker. Who's our Jess. picker? Jess. Yeah. Jess. Uh, you say Jess? No. We'll be recording Topicana here soon. Yeah, we will. Y'all want a tease? Yeah, I do. I came up with this one when we were hanging out, Andy. Was it when we were in Chicago? Might have been. But I want you to tell me about a physical scar on your body and how you got it. What's the story behind oh, it? Oh, I got one. Yeah. <laughs> just, just one scar. It's, it's our Jaws moment right now. Mm. We're going to. your scars. We're, we're sitting around the table pulling our scars we'll out. We inspect and, each what, other. What was her name? Yeah. Oh, uh, Marianne Moffat. Marianne Moffat. She broke my heart. Yeah. 
That's which was a real supposedly a real person that hung like that was a, like hung around with the crew on the set and stuff. Huh. I wonder if she really broke his heart. As the story goes, he probably tried to bang her, and well, she that probably said no. Consistent with what I know of him. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. probably actually what happened. So thanks so much for listening, y'all. Thank you. All right, we got a list uh, for yes. us, Amy. I'm sorry, I forgot it. How I'm do so the show? glad. Uh, <laughs> I had never actually. I mean, if I have heard of this movie, I had no real knowledge. Of I had it. never heard of it. And um, so I'm so glad we did this because I really enjoyed the shit out of it. I loved those noir movies, man. Yeah, I like this one a lot. I do. I, I like them, but this they one was feel like good. A, yeah. On, on the, the whole. whole. <laughs> Jinx. At the end of every show, we always say hi to our Bialz Bubs. Again, patreon.com slash N O T L P. Elise. Hi, I'll see you very soon. I love Lynn you. Walsh. Hi, thank you for uh, cluing, cluing yeah. us into the uh, thing. And uh, I come she from a Lynn down under. on the Italian. Oh, she's a snitch. <laughs> oh, don't snitch on Italians. Uh, that's what I've heard. You're my favorite snitch, Lynn. <laughs> Alyssa, Brandon and Emily, Jeffel, <laughs> Dustin, and Ace, and, and Lucifer. Lucifer, and Poe. Po. I own a good one. You're not allowed to get a goldfish. I own a great one. I own a great one. Sorry. Not to brag. <laughs> it's totally queef. Brian. <laughs> it's the sweatiest thing you've ever seen. <laughs> Brian is super sweaty. So sweaty. <laughs> Uh, Billy C. That's how I wrote your name down here, Bill. So you're just going to deal with it. Well, well, it is correct. Technically Bill Farner. Yep. Blake. Hey, Blake. Mark Watts. What's up? <laughs> Thank you. I miss your face. Blaine. I miss your scent. <laughs> Joe. Jordan. Smell like sound. I miss your cooking. <laughs> Joe, they talked over that, but just know you're special. No, let's do it again. Huh. Joe. Jordan he gets James. two shout outs. Jordash. Andy made she him a little name tag to wear at Horror Hound. It's, it's, it's only it's because we Jordan. talked over him. Sorry. It was the Jordash jeans. Let's talk over again so he gets three. Paul. Love you, Paul. Very much. Oh, yes. Jeremy and Cassie and Gamora. Why am I singing so much? I'm I've been so very sorry. singing today. It's okay. Stupid. Ernie. Hi, Ernie. I hope things are nice and warm in Texas. Dave Siebert. Dave TV. Carla. Just a gigolo. <laughs> and finally, our newest Beelzebub, Michael Burns. Oh, How'd he get burned? Well, <laughs> how do he get burned? <laughs> okay. <laughs> did we? Well, we fun? did it. We done it. We did it. We had fun. We did it. It was done. You guys I loved are, it. I loved it more yeah. than I can say. <laughs> yeah. For Monday night shows. <laughs> Woo! All right. It's a hell of a drug. PR we'll figure it out. Bye. 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 Frankenstein was wondering if he should go to bed when his old buddy let her face put on. Oh,